Okay, so steaming your oven and why we do it. Okay, so um, when you put your loaf into the oven, what happens is the yeast has a little bit of a last hurrah. So yeast is at its most active at 38 degrees centigrade. Now your dough temperature will be nowhere near that. Um, probably the warmest that your dough gets to is about 24, 27 maximum if you've used really warm water. Um, but when it goes into the oven, it, in the inside of that loaf, it can reach 38 degrees centigrade and the yeast goes bonkers, okay? It really loves that temperature and it goes um, uh, and, and eats the remaining bits of sugar and produces a bit more carbon dioxide and a bit more ethanol. But that is really minimal activity compared to the already trapped carbon dioxide that was let out by the yeast during fermentation that's got trapped inside those um, the gluten and um, that expands in the heat and pushes the gluten further up, okay? So when you put uh, a fully proofed loaf in the oven, it always rises a little bit more, okay, in that first 10, 15 minutes of baking. And that's the expansion of the carbon dioxide and the yeast having a last uh, feast. That's called oven spring. And for oven spring to happen, you need the loaf to stay moist, okay, because the hot, heat of the oven will quite quickly dry out the top of a loaf when you pop it in. So you need a nice steamy oven so that that crust doesn't dry out. Okay, so there are various ways of steaming your oven. The, um, the one that I would most recommend is using a Dutch oven, okay, which is another video because that's a really effective way of using the water that's evaporating out of the loaf to act in its own little steamy chamber. Okay, but if you don't have a Dutch oven, then you're going to want to steam your oven in other ways. And sometimes Dutch ovens don't work for the shape of your loaf or if you're baking lots of rolls or baking something like a focaccia. Although a focaccia having lots of olive oil on doesn't necessarily need a steamy oven anyway. But if you want to steam, the, my preferred method is to use the um, pressure sprayer. Okay, now these aren't particularly expensive. You can pick them up from um, DIY stores. Um, and what I do with this is I pump the top. Okay, so I've, I've tightened the lid really tight and then I pump it. That builds up the pressure and then I can release a constant spray. So my oven's not on at the moment, but if I just show you. So it will just spray a constant spray of steam into the oven. And what I do is I, I spray the oven walls, the shelves, the roof. And as I'm shutting the door, I'm steaming, okay? Now you do want to avoid using very cold water and hitting the glass of the door and the light in the oven, okay, because they might explode. So you do have to take care with that. And if you've got an oven door that lifts down, what you can do is pop an oven cloth over the glass door to avoid any pot uh, potential problems when you're spraying, okay. So those aren't particularly expensive, great tool, quite large though. And then what you've got to do is once you finish spraying, you've just got to release the pressure, otherwise it leaks everywhere. If you don't want something that large in your kitchen, which is understandable, then just a plant mister like this, um, which you know is, is a couple of quid from any supermarket, um, and you can just keep spraying um, as you're loading your loaf. Spray the oven walls, the oven um, shelves, and the floor with water. Okay, and as you shut the door, just keep spraying. So I tend to do. I don't know, 15, 20 sprays with one of these if I'm using these. Now the reason I prefer this method is, as you can see, I wear glasses and um, I can control where the steam goes and I'm controlling the steam isn't hitting me in the face, okay? Um, and normally I'm in here with lots of students so I want to be able to control that steam and this is a really good way of doing that. But there are other methods for steaming your oven and it's up to you to find the one that suits you best, okay? So you can put, um, something like a foil tray or an old baking tray into the bottom of the oven and then as you load your loaf put a cup 
of hot water in. Okay, now you don't want too much because you only want steam for the first 10 or 15 minutes of the bake. After that, you want the steam to dissipate out of the oven. So it's important that just for the first 10, 15 minutes, um, that you, you have just enough steam for that. Otherwise, you might find yourself dragging out a hot tray with filled with very hot water, which can be dangerous. Uh, but that is another way of doing it, and some people prefer that way. You can also use um, that foil tray and fill it with old nuts and bolts. Not greasy ones, obviously, because you don't want that smell in your oven. But something like all um, lava rocks from a gas barbecue in the bottom there. And then, of course, they provide an extra burst of steam as you put the water in. So they can be a really good way of creating a really quick burst of steam. There are some ovens with the steam function in them, um, so use that steam function. And also, a note of caution, okay, please read the instructions for your particular oven. Um, some ovens do not like additional steam being put into them, okay, if they're very sort of modern ovens. So if you've got a brand new spanking oven, make sure you read the instructions before you start to inject steam or shoot steam with a, with a pressure sprayer, for example. Make sure it's suitable for that particular oven. Okay, so that's just my disclaimer there. But um, steam really is important when we're baking bread. It stops the um, crust from um, becoming too hard and it allows oven spring, but it also will improve the colour and the shine of your loaf. Okay, so um, it, it, it just helps with caramelisation. Try to avoid spraying directly on top of the loaf because that will create sort of a grey colour on top of the loaf. So if you can avoid putting too much uh, water spray directly onto the loaf, that will improve things.